Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we're gonna go back to the Millipede. This is the Millipede that I had uh, gotten for a great price. You saw the restoration series. If you haven't seen it, click on the link above, you will check it out. But what I wanna do here, you know, you guys know I replaced the marquee and everything on that. And then uh, basically tuned up the monitor, uh, put the multi-kit in it. But what I wanna do here, and I'll even show you here, um, is basically I want to redo this control panel here. So you can see there's tape on here. We'll get a closer look, we'll light it up. But uh, yeah, that's what I wanna do in this episode. We'll kind of restore this. We'll put the new overlay on here, that's nice. We'll kind of uh, redo the trackball a little bit. I wanna break it in a little better than it is now. Well, I'll show you how to do that. So I guess without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so this is the control panel. I wanted to show you the condition of that really fast. I'm gonna kind of zoom in a tiny bit, uh, but basically you can see over here, um, I have you know the tape on here just to keep it from cracking some more because as you lean on it and stuff, it would just kind of crack and then the kids would peel it and stuff. So especially over here, when you're moving around, sometimes you get caught on that. So I definitely wanna do it. I was gonna keep it original. Then, you know, down here, can't really see unless I kind of go down to it, but Right over here, you can see that if I just move my hand like this right here, see how it's lifting up? So this whole thing is coming out. So I do have a brand new reproduction. I believe I got it from, uh, I wanna say Phoenix Arcade. Um, so it is the exact material. I mean, it's a dead on reproduction. I already have it, laid it flat, ready to go. So what we wanna do, I think in this episode is we'll just take everything out. We'll rebuild the trackball again. This time we'll, um, I'll show you how to break it in using a drill or a Dremel. Um, really easy, just run it for a minute, that way it gets worn down a little bit. And then, uh, you know, we can pop it back in, it'll feel like it's really broken in. And then, um, you know, remove this with a special method that I tried already on another control panel, it worked beautifully. So I'll show you a really quick way to get this all off. And, uh, you know, we'll all, we're gonna do this all indoors, by the way, so that, um, you know, I can just show you that it's really not too messy, it's not, there's no bondo involved or anything. We're literally just stripping this down no harsh chemicals or anything. And, uh, you know, we can get it back on, polish it up and put the new overlay on. So let's go ahead, we'll jump into it, we'll change an angle. What I'm gonna do is just put this down, open it up and we'll swing it down and just remove everything here. Okay, so hopefully I have a good angle here. I'm just gonna get in the coin door, open that up and then pop the uh, latches off. So there's one here, should be one on the other side. I believe the Atari games here only have two. Uh, Midway games have one in the center as well, so you want to be careful. And then when you drop it down, it's not a big deal here because, you know, I'm going to replace the overlay, but it, just keep in mind that it does hit the door, so you're going to want to close it here with this design. Same thing with, uh, you know, games like Crystal Castles or, you know, the original Cloak and Dagger conversion or whatever. So, so you drop it down, and then I'm just going to take some, I guess here it has four bolts here. I'm going to pop those out. We'll disconnect everything. Should only go in one way, it's all keyed. And I'm gonna kind of remove all this here. Wrenches here just to get it off. So I might have tightened it a little bit. Just a little bit just to get it going. So I did replace this with a brand new switch, but I'm just temporarily taking it out. I'm just gonna put it back together so parts don't get lost. All right, so I went in and shut it off here. Good to go, I can put that on the side. So now that I have that off, I can take this off. For the cone buttons, you're just gonna strip everything you can off of it. I actually need to take this out, but what I'm gonna do is take everything off first. That way it's out of the way uh, from the harness. All right, so I grabbed some cutters. I also grabbed a plastic bag, Ziploc, that way I can keep everything inside. So all I'm gonna do is snip, there's like these uh, holders here, and I can always get a new zip tie, so I'm not removing um, the actual holder but I am putting it all in here and then there's one screw that I could probably take out with this wrench here it's just a ground screw that has a nut on it so so this is a small tiny little harness just to not lose anything I'm just gonna stick it in this nice big ziplock bag and then in addition I have the two cone heads right here which I'm gonna stick in there so I'll just close that for now and then I'm just gonna take this and right now it was super tight. So if you're having trouble with your trackball, people are saying just loosen the bolts here because you might've put it on too tight. 
You definitely don't want to over tight it anyway when you put the new artwork because you don't want it to dimple. All right, so I'm back and I have the panel here. Now what's cool is that I bought this at Harbor Freight. It was like, I want to say it was 30 bucks. It's just a multi-tool, oscillator tool. You guys, there's all different kinds of brands you can get. You don't have to get it from Harbor Freight. I just got it from there because it's cheap. I bought some extra bits that I really didn't need because <laughs> it kind of came with everything, but I bought some sanding stuff. So I don't know, we may or may not use that. I got to see, but so I did buy it. I've used it before, like I said. Let me just chuck everything else back in the box. Now it has a couple bits you can use. Um, this one here is the straight bit. Uh, that's a scraper. And then this one here has a jagged edge. So you don't want to use a jagged edge one. I might use another one on here because I did, you can see there's dents in here and that's because um, I did use it on you know the top of the panel here. It really will mess up if you go there. You really want to go on straight surfaces, but I'm going to give it a shot and try. What I may do is kind of get in there somehow. I'm definitely going to take the tape off. So this is the tape that I had put on there just to kind of help it not get worse. You can see here like this whole thing is just coming right out. So I have a moving blanket here. It's pretty dirty and stuff, but you know, it'll prevent everything from, uh, I'm going and then this here there's a rubber strip which I do have to replace it and I'll show you guys how to do that as well so for now I'm not even going to use a heat gun I'm just basically going to pull it off best I can you know it doesn't always come out in this case it's not cooperating hundred percent but uh yeah let me go ahead and plug this in um yeah so you just take it and Kind of just run it along here like that and it's basically like taking a scraper but it does it automatically it's pretty cool so i'm going to take this whole piece off right here so check it out comes right off like butter and then don't worry about the residue we're actually going to use the uh, normal method that I use with the paint removal tool and just spin it on there and get this down to the bare metal and then we'll spray paint it at some point. Okay, so I kind of got underneath here. This curve is a little tricky. You have to just kind of do it like once and then again this way and then again that way. But once you get that done, check this out. It's pretty easy. Oh yeah, this is way better. It just tore it right up. So I'm gonna do that to the whole thing and we'll uh, continue over here. Okay, so I'm mainly done here and I'm actually <laughs> picking up the stuff that I dropped because this is a little bit tacky, but I got the most of it off. You know, um, it does a really good job, I have to say, because that's really, if you've ever seen a millipede control panel or crystal castles or something like that, it's pretty thick. See like some of it's stuck back on. So maybe what I'll do is I'll clean it up a little more. I'll get rid of all this junk right here. Okay, so I'm back, I cleared everything and now I'm just gonna kind of hit it with this. This is just a grinder that I just attached a paint remover on here. I put a link in the description for these. This one is pretty much, still has some life on it, but I kind of got the edges when I did my last one. I'm gonna try to use up the rest of it and then I'll change it if I need to. So here we go.
so we're pretty much done with this. Looks like this is probably the last I'm going to use this uh, <laughs> this bit on this. Uh, I have more of these, tons of them. So again, link in the description. It's pretty cool. I love using these things, and it takes it off pretty much like butter. Like there's no sticky residue whatsoever. Now I'm just going to finish it up with a drill with the fine bit on there that has uh, there's coarse and there's fine. So fine is the one to use. So it polishes it up. And then we'll go ahead and spray this down, bring it inside, let it cure, and then go ahead and apply the artwork. All right, so this is it. Um, I paid special attention actually to this right here. And the reason I did that is because that's usually where it breaks first. <laughs> uh, here and over here actually. So you don't want any sharp edges. And I found a couple like, I smoothed them out and they look really good now, but um, originally I had like some sharp dents here. I guess somebody hit it or something like that. But I got those out. So now it's nice and smooth. You know, it can really do that. If you really need to dig a little deeper, if there's really bigger ones, you can actually use the grinder again. With the paint wheel, you know, I wouldn't suggest grinding it raw. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, um, put this to the side for now, because it is raining, and then I'm gonna go outside, paint it. Um, I probably won't show that, I'll just show you the results. All right, guys, so we're back, and I'm actually gonna rebuild the trackball first. This one has already been rebuilt with the arcade shop uh, stuff, but for whatever reason, it didn't feel See how it kind of stops a little bit? Doesn't feel as smooth as it could have been, so I'm gonna take it apart. Some people were saying not to tighten these as much, these four right here, um, or these four right here that go to the panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it apart because I'm gonna break it in. Um, I read on the cloth forums that you can actually use a Dremel to do this. What's really cool is that these are typical, you know, sanding discs that you can put on where you unscrew this and you tighten it on there. Uh, but I'm going to use a small version of that, but without the sanding disc. You kind of just take it like that, just screw it in, and the bearing fits perfectly on here. So let me go ahead and take this apart and show you what I mean. So, put that over there too. Um, looks like these actually were broken in a little bit, believe it or not. Um, I'm going to leave them alone, uh, these parts, but the actual bearings I'm going to take out. And I'll just put those there for now. Same thing with this. Same thing with this. And I have to take this one out here. And the way you do it is you just, uh, usually it needs a special screw there. So there we go. So that came out. You basically just take this off and put that on there like that. And there's a little washer you gotta be careful of. You see that right there? Just don't lose that. So I'm gonna slide this off, put this basically like that. And same thing here. And the washer is going to be on the side of the nut. So again, I'm just going to hold it here so it doesn't move. Take it off. And you can see that the washer is actually on this part here. So I'm going to leave that in there. Not a big deal. Take that off. Put this back in. So now I can move this to the side. I'm just going to leave everything in there like it is. I'll move this kind of over here. And... I'm just going to put it on. So you just pop it on like that, kind of with friction. You're actually going to be holding this. So you're not going to be doing it uh, too hard. You're going to be leaving it on the, you know, the lowest speed, whatever that is. See that? It doesn't come off. And I'm going to be holding it so that it does resistance. So what I will do is I'm going to set my timer for a minute. I'm going to do a minute each side. And I'm going to set my timer here. So I'm going to go one, zero, zero. Oops, I did too much here. There it is. So one minute. And I'll just show you guys here. And you're going to do it in one direction for one minute and then flip it around and do it in the other direction so that it turns in both directions. So here we go. I'm going to hit it. Hit start. I have it on the lowest setting right now where I'm just holding it right here. You know, you don't want to let go. You want to actually have it spinning. And what you're doing is you're just breaking it in. And these bearings are packed bearings where... Um, they're actually sealed with a metal piece. You can take that off and clean them out after you do all this, but I'm not gonna bother doing that. I just wanna break them in a little bit because I feel these were very stiff. 
Maybe they were sitting in the warehouse for a while. I'm not really sure. So just in case you do that side for a minute, flip it around, do the other side. couple seconds just because all right second it stop and then you're gonna take it out and when you take it out you're gonna flip it around the other way so that it spins in the other direction and just be careful because sometimes the metal can be a little hot because of the friction so I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna hit start this time yeah that's the lowest speed right there I'm gonna hold it so that's all I'm doing, just holding the outside of it so that it doesn't spin. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Let me give it a few extra seconds here. All right, turn it off. All right, so now that one's done. So this one's completely done. It's a little warm because of the friction, like I said. So put the next one on and hit start and do it again. Cool. So now that those are done, uh, let's put this thing back together. So I'm not going to clean. I was going to clean these off a little bit, but I think they're fine. I don't think there's, there's like a slight little uh, indentation there, but whatever. I'm going to quickly put them on. So let's drop that in there. And it feels good. It feels smooth. Uh, same thing with this, but we got to put it together this time. So I see two things that probably got loose. I bet you those are ones that fell out. Let me uh, double check. This is actually stuck because I had the tape on there to prevent dust from getting in. I bet you these go underneath it. So let me uh, quickly take that out. So I think, yeah, I could even see where the washer went. I could see it underneath. It goes on here like that. And then that goes on there. And it should be fine. So that screws in. And then let me just hold it again here. All right. And then this can go in facing the encoder. And this will move on you. See how it goes back and forth? Just make sure it's all the way over here so that it falls into this little groove there. Okay, I'm back. I actually got some 99% alcohol that I have in this holder and some swabs. You can use cotton swabs, I guess. What I'm going to do, I'm actually doing, here, let me do it on here so you can, basically just saturating it. And I'm going to use that other one for drying it. And let me just take this out here. Should barely fit. Yeah, it does. Good. Yeah. And I'm just kind of sticking it in there just to make sure. It's just foam, so it should be fine. So I'll put that down there. And then same thing with this one. Just in case there's any dirt or dust on the actual optics, I'm going to use a dry one now just to kind of wipe it clean. All right. I'm going to do it to this one, dry it. Cool. So that's good to go. I'm just seeing where everything is and then I'll get where my hands are and then not touch it here. You know, you're going to touch it anyway, so it's not a big deal if you get your hand on it. But for the most part, I just want to make sure there's no dirt or grime on here. Uh, so there it is. Uh, anyway, let me pop this back on here. So when you do that, you just got to make sure that this part lines up. So I'm going to kind of go under here, take a quick look. It looks like that one's on. And then this one here, that one's on too. So it all fits good. And then when I tighten it, I want to make sure that that's not moving at all. Yeah, I think we're fine. All right, cool. So I'm doing it just, you know, slightly, but not like, I'm not cranking on it or anything. 
All right, let me just do this one again, just to make sure, and then this one. All right, so let's see. Yeah, I feel like it's rolling a little better, so hopefully that'll feel better. So let's put this to the side. I'm gonna bring the control panel here. We'll go ahead and finish the graphics. I can show you what I did with, uh, you know, after I stripped all the old CPO off of it, and we can put the new one on here and get this thing going. So here it is, this is the thing that I painted. I stripped it down and then all I did was hit it with a um, satin black. What I'm gonna do now is just prepare it real quick. And there's two products you can do. This is uh, Rap Attack. You can use Rap Attack if you want, um, or you can use you know, rubbing alcohol, which is the other thing. Um, I'm not really concerned about it. I technically can use this as well. This here is a, it's called Rapid Prep and it's supposed to be really good for preparing surfaces but if you don't have that you're okay to use rubbing alcohol as well um, so i would just go ahead you can spray it right on it and then this one here and then i had a rag oh yeah it's right here so i'm going to take that and just go over it and it smells good it's not some people use um uh, denatured alcohol, but that's flammable and it smells. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is really formulated for, it's really formulated to, if you want to use the wet method to put it on. I am not using the wet method. This is very thick material and I'm going to use a heat gun to go around the curves, just like I did with my God Plus. And I feel this is okay if you put this on dry, it's not a big deal. All right, so I have it here. I actually have the overlay and I have a button. So I'm going to try to tilt it so you guys can see it. Hopefully, I think that's good actually. So that's it right there. And maybe I'll move it up a little bit. There we go. It's just hard because it actually hits on the bottom there. But I want to take this and kind of stick it in there. And then just gently, you know, you have the other, the screw part. I'm actually putting that underneath. Just to get it general positioning. And then I can move this and position it where I need to be. That's fine. Same thing here. Move that a little bit down. I'm actually going to lift that up a little bit. I'm going to move it back slightly because it's actually hitting the bottom there. So I'm just going to take a piece of that, put it on the side. Another piece, put it on the side. And I want to start from the top. Actually, I want to start, I think, from the middle and then work my way back. So this whole piece from here up is gonna come off like that. I can kind of get this one up a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect. And that goes on like that. Put it on pretty good to get a good grip there. And then this one, we'll just double check. And I should be able to leave that off. Yeah, so that helped a little bit. You don't have to put it on, I guess, but for me, it worked good. Some other panels have more than one button where you actually screw them in, it'll hold it in, but. All right, so that looks fine. So I'm just gonna take it off from here. And I do have my heat gun ready. So that is actually on the side here. It's plugged in. Cut it. These are really, really super sharp. I would suggest using a new one every time you do stuff because you will tear it and leave little fuzzies behind and you don't want those. All right, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and take some more of this stuff out. I guess some of the paper when I took it off did stuff. Cool. All right, so I have this little squeegee here that I just grabbed just to make sure it's on. So far it looks okay, can't complain. Um, I actually don't wanna do this yet. I don't know, I feel like I do have to do it, but I wanna kinda of get this bend out of the way so that it's stuck on there really good, then I can get the edges, but it's gonna be hard if I tilt it. So what I may have to do is I'm gonna put this and turn it around like that. It's really an awkward panel to do. 
That's why I figured, oh, let me cover it on the channel. Um, so, of course, you can't see it, but you can kind of see this part right here. So that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to have to cut it. It's not really cut the size here. It's going to overhang a little bit. It's unlike the other panel that I did. So I'm just literally just pulling it up, running my finger underneath like that, and kind of shaping it to go. And I may hit it with uh, a heat gun just to get that curve trained a little better. You can do this as you go, but I'm just putting it on dry. So I'm just running my hands up. I'm going like this, putting it underneath. And let's see if I can, yeah, that looks good. So I'm gonna leave that. It's okay if that bends over there underneath because you wanna train it to the panel anyway, but this is exactly what you want here. And I'm actually gonna cut it first with that blade I just had. Okay, so I wanna cut it first before I heat it up because I don't want this to kind of shrink and do stuff weird. So I'm just gonna go by feel first. Where I'm gonna just take some of this and kind of go against the edge here and just use two hands and kind of just... It sounds horrible, but it's cutting pretty good. <laughs> So that's good. I'll put that on the side because I have to actually toss that out of the garbage. And then now I can kind of get it from this angle here and follow it. I'm going to cut straight out first just so I can see what's under here. And without trying to cut myself, there. So that was a little rough, but now I'm going to get in there and really cut the way it should be. All right, so that looks good. I'm not gonna go crazy there. And again, I'm just gonna kind of angle down a little bit. You know, it's okay if it's rough at first. And just go over it again. So that was a little tiny bit rough, but now I'm just gonna refine it by going over it one more time like that. Looks way better. So this is just a standard heat gun that I use for like, um, you know, shrink tubing and stuff. I have a little nozzle on here. This thing comes off, but I have it pretty much on there with this so it kind of directs the heat where I want it to go. So there's off, and then this here is just blowing normal air. I usually use that to cool it down, and then that's heat. So if you're unsure about using this, mine is very direct and I'm really experienced at using it. I would use a hair dryer because it's not as intense, and if you put this on the, on the artwork, it could melt it. So just be really careful with this. So I'm kind of just doing this just to get it going. Let me grab that and put it away. So I'm turning it once more just to kind of turn it towards you. I'm going to get this here. This is really what I want to focus on, the curve. So I'm just heating it up a little bit. Nothing too crazy. And even if you, I mean, you could stop at this point and be like, hey, it looks great. But I really want it to stick there because... That's usually on those bends is really what, where you have the issues on these panels. So I'm like putting it down here. I actually have a heat proof, this thing is heat proof, this cover. So it works well and I'm just, you know, kind of training it, pushing it towards the edge like that. I do not feel any air bubbles, so I think we're okay. But just in case, the fact that it's so thick like this, it's such a great overlay to put on. <laughs> All right, so let me heat it up once more and I'll just push it down. We should be good. But you know, it just reactivates the stickiness, I guess, and kind of puts it on really firmly and that's exactly what you want. I'm gonna do this here too. And the edges are cut to size, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, so I just realized I didn't have it on heat. So I'll do that part again. Everybody makes mistakes, guys. <laughs> Hopefully you'll learn from mine. So this is cool. There were a few people asking about it. I know a couple uh, viewers had millipedes. So this is how I'm doing the overlay. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, um, Arcade Shop is out of stock. Uh, it's about $40 for this thing. So now I'm just making sure it's on there. It feels pretty good. So that looks pretty awesome. 
And now this kind of got trained. The fact that I bended it, it got trained a little bit. The fact that I bent it, actually, my grammar's bad. <laughs> so let me put, let's take these off. Hopefully you can get a good view of that. I actually moved the camera back. I had to put it on a stand that's even higher so you guys can see because this panel is just so huge. So at this point, I feel pretty confident if I just get the whole thing off. Um, you could just get it down from here. Let's see if I go that way. I'm going to cut it to like right here just in case. Because it's a triple like layer strange Atari shape. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take that off for now. Put that in the garbage. Put this safely on the side. And it left like every time I do that, it leaves like a little coating. Kind of sucks. So this is still pretty saturated with that stuff. So I'm going to get in there and, you know, make sure it doesn't go in there completely. So here it is. Now I'm going to just use my squeegee. You could use your hand too. I'm using it because I'm being fancy, but you could totally use your hand. Just be careful that you don't go this way. You want to kind of not aggravate that area and tear it by mistake. But this has like some Velcro on here. It's the reverse part of Velcro that's soft. Industrial strength right on a Bondo thingy that I made. And because it's nice and big, it fits really nice in your hand. So I'm kind of going on the edge here, just training it a little bit. You can heat that up if you want. I could probably do that. Let me do that now. You don't have to, but I figure anything to make it bend, I'm actually letting it get hot here. There it is, nice and hot. So I'm just still holding it up a little bit. You know, you don't want to warp anything, so be very careful when you do this. Okay. I'm turning that off. And then now I'm just going to kind of get better, a better angle here. What I'm going to do is just turn it around. Just for me, it's a better angle if I kind of do this and kind of push towards, towards everything and get around that. And my hands tend to sweat a little bit. <laughs> so it's like actually perfect for doing something like this. But so I'm on this crease here. That's the flat part. So I'm kind of just pulling a little bit up here just to make it top, but I'm not going crazy. It is pretty durable material, but I don't want to tear it, but I don't think I could tear it if I tried. All right, so now that looks good. I'm going to use this now. Kind of get any, you can hear some air bubbles in there. Just trying to get those out. This to me is the most critical part of the whole panel. Um, before I get the other stuff stuck on there, I think I'm going to heat it up one more time. Now that I have both hands available and push it down because this part was the part that cracks, especially on mine and it's nice and hot. I'm just feeling it and you see how I'm moving it around. I'm never leaving it like straight on one point, you know, moving it around, moving the air around, it's getting nice and hot here. Just heating it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to not put that there because it will melt the panel. You don't want the heat gun touching that. That would be horrible. So yeah, this looks good. I don't hear any air bubbles. And I'm just pushing this here with, with my hand. Just being extra careful here. And I will be playing this in a few minutes because it looks like it's coming out good. All right. And now, of course, you got to lift it here. Pull this out. Um, I could probably do it on this end. It'll probably be easier. Let's see. Yeah. So this, when I got it, it was curled up. But you want to do definitely for sure is to lay it flat. And um, I had this laying flat for months. I got this so long ago <laughs> that I can't even tell you uh, when they're going to have it back in stock. I bought it when it was in stock. So, so this should just come right off. 
All right, so that can go on the side. And now you want to squeegee the rest or with your hand, it's fine too. But again, it's coming out pretty flawless on the sides. I'm trying to look to see, it looks pretty great. We did a good job lining it up. And now I'm just gonna just do this with my hand here. Just to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And I'm gonna heat it up again. Yeah, so it is hanging over a little bit, which is disappointing. I'm gonna to have to cut that somehow. All right, so I'm gonna to have to do this. I follow along that lip there. Can you hear it? Ouch, I think I just cut myself. We'll see. But I'm going along that, following along that edge, and I think that's okay. That looks good. I'm happy with that, actually. I just don't like that some of the serial number shows here, but and I want to get that little white piece off. I really don't like how that looks. Let's see how that looks. All right, I think that looks fine. All right, let me turn it around so you guys can see it. Look at that, isn't that great? So now I'm gonna take some rapid tack, the normal rapid tack, and I'm just gonna actually spray it. Try not to get, make a mess here. And look at that, it looks so good. <laughs> Compared to what it was, where it was all messed up here, here, you know, and then, here is really what bothered me because you'd slide your hand here and rip stuff. Sometimes you cut yourself on the, because this is thick artwork. And I would cut myself on the artwork. So now I'm no longer doing that. So I got to just figure out what to do with the bolts. I ordered new bolts. You know, I did. And I'll show you the difference. For me, I'm going to put them on and we'll see how it looks. Let's get that stuff out. I have, uh, these are the original stuff that I had on there. So... Remember we put everything in a bag? So these are the original carriage bolts. They look okay. They're not bad. I was going to see how they're very smooth here. It's hard. To, let me see if I can focus here. Can you see that? They're very smooth, right? And then I got these other ones um, through, I think it was Arcade Shop actually. Uh, see how these have that? Can you see that? They have that, uh, that like writing on it. You can actually get rid of that. You stick it in a drill in the chuck right here. And then you take some sandpaper on some wood and you just kind of just move it around and it sands it right off. And then you can either leave it like that or you could just spray paint it. So I wanted to do it because these are, these were a little bit rusty, but I think they're okay. I might just live with it for now. So I'm not sure how to put it in. I forgot which direction I had it in. Does it go this way? Does it go this way? Um, I don't remember. So let me quickly check on my other machine. If I have this upside down like this, right? That's how the other one is. I call this a little W here. It's like a little, see, it's W. And then this one's smooth. It actually goes so that that part is facing diagonal. So it goes on this way like that. So I'm gonna put each one in. Yeah, I think I wanna paint them black. Now, it, they're so noticeable now. They have a slight, like bronzy look. You know what, I'll leave these in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that thing with the drill to the other ones and then um, swap them out eventually. I'm not gonna do that. I'll probably do that offline. Um, but still, don't want these coming out. Of course they want to, but And there's no washers or anything here, so. But these are the ones that you don't want to over tighten too, because the nylon makes it not come out. So it should be fine. Okay, so I figured it out. So it's 10 millimeter, and I have a ratchet set, but I'm just gonna use this. This is part of the ratchet set where you just put that in there and you kind of tighten it by hand, because I do not want to over tighten these. So I'm just gonna make them even. 
This one barely fits in there because of this thing. But I'm just getting it so that it's a little snug. Alright, so I'm just doing it that way. Put that in. Just a tiny bit, not too tight. You don't want to crank on those for sure. And the nylon, let the nylon do its job. There's nylon inside there that prevents it from moving. Now that it's done, I can go ahead and put the rest of the wiring on there. So let me see how this works here. Uh, let's see how it looks first of all. Wow, that looks pretty good. Feels really smooth. It's gonna be kind of like, yeah, it has to be in that direction. So, wow, night and day, I'm telling you. Feels really good. This is a brand new button that I had gotten from Arcade Shop a while back. So I'm gonna put that in there. There's like two little notches here, which you wanna line up right there. And before I push it all the way through, I wanna get it in there first, okay. So that's good. I'm gonna move that down like that. And then this one too, I'm gonna to counter, see? Doing the opposite. And then I'm sticking this in here. Screw this on. As much as I can. Now it locked, I can feel it, it locked in there. Now I'm just turning this to kind of counter it. And I'm not going crazy. Don't worry about if it's not lined up. As long as it's tight, you're good. So that's fine. And then this one, I think, went in the metal here. Might have to scrape it up a little bit so that the paint goes away. So I'm kind of just, you know, I want, it, I want it to be able to touch everything. Sorry, I know it sounds horrible. It's like nails on a, on a chalkboard. I'm just getting that ground exposed so that when this goes on it, it'll be fine. I don't think it matters which way you put it on. That's fine with me. And zip tie it down just so it doesn't flop around. And I think it was, I even see where it was pressed on. So it was pressed right there. And that's it. That's on. Okay. So I'm actually, yeah, that's good. I think you guys can see. And now I'm just gonna cut them off. Nice and flush so that it doesn't scratch you. And this one I'm gonna have to get from this angle. All right, that's good. Toss those out. And that's it, back to factory, right? So let's throw this back on. We'll see how it looks. Oh man, it looks beautiful. Look at this. Wow, like I'm really psyched on how great it came out. <laughs> and it even has a little notice right here. It says, uh, you know, the year it came out, 1982 Atari Inc. That's so cool. Okay guys, I'm back. So I have the three bolts that I need. I'm gonna stick this in here. And before I do, I'm going to magic eraser this little area here. This is like super filthy. I'm trying to figure out, yeah, that's all dirt. So let me go ahead and do that. I might just do the whole front here because um, I was going to do the rest of the cab too and then put the team molding on, but I at least wanted to get this done. All right, so what I'm going to do first um, is I'm not taking the coin door off. I'm not doing all that, but I'm going to get all this and kind of brighten it up a little bit. So simple green is the best way to do it. If you don't have a magic eraser, oops, I had it on the wrong setting here. There we go. You want it on spray. Um, you know, this should come off. You see how it's coming off like that? It should come off just fine. You don't really need magic eraser for everything. Um, I'm just spraying it a little better there. I don't want it to drip down everywhere. So it's actually coming out pretty good. You know, again, this was in storage from the guy I got it from. Good guy, Ian. I actually made friends with him afterwards. Um, I still keep in contact with him. He's really cool. 
So he will see it eventually in its restored state, you know. Um, it's pretty cool that his brother's dad uh, had this game and they had it in storage. And, you know, I fixed their Galaxian. So, all right, so now I'm just gonna spray a little bit on here. These are actually Magic Eraser knockoffs that I got. I think I got a hundred pack for like $10. I can't remember where I got it, unless I'd share it with you guys. It was like on, I don't know if it was eBay or Alibaba, but it took, let me tell you, it took like three or four months to get to me to the point where I forgot about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So it looks like this pink is probably the paint underneath. So I'm not gonna go too crazy on that. This part looks great. And I am gonna change the tea molding. This is special flat tea molding by Atari. They don't make it anymore. So if you go to teamolding.com and you replace it, you're replacing it with round tea molding. It's not flat, but I do have flat. Um, shout out actually to uh, uh, Fetish Boy on, uh, on Clav. That's P-H, Fetish Boy. <laughs> We call him Fett, that's his nickname or whatever, but uh, he had a whole bunch. He got some from a production run that they did on Clav and uh, I contacted him and he was, he actually resold some to me. Some of that, some, you know, he bought a whole bunch of it and he's like, yeah, I could spare some. So he gave it to me. So that's gonna go on this machine. Okay. All right, so here it is. Let's put this on. My son's waiting in the wings right now. Um, actually ready to play this thing. <laughs> All right, so I got my son to help me out here because uh, I kept dropping the bolts inside for the nuts. So you're just going to hold it like this, I guess, with your... It goes on like that. And I'm going to try to get it in there. I'm dropping everything today. All right, so that's one. I'm going to hold it here. Put it in there. And I want to do at least a couple there. Or maybe I'll do this one here. And that one's there. And this one, of course. All right, so give me the washer, the fat one. Okay. All right, so the fat one goes on first. Please don't drop it. I already dropped them in there, okay. Lock washer. It's like surgery. Nut. Scalpel, no. <laughs> the nut, we're gonna just gonna put on, just to secure. We'll tighten them in a minute. Okay, now I can let go. Okay, so this is the insulation. This is actually um, the exact size that you need for control panels. I did some research and talked to some people on Facebook and they were suggesting, you know, different sizes, but this is the one when I got it, it's a dead match to what's on their factory. So um, it has like a piece of tape that goes over it. So I'm gonna have to just, obviously you're only gonna use one of these, but the best thing to do, since I'm only using one, is to just, measure across here. So I'm actually measuring on this thing right here. And it's gonna be about right there. You don't have to really go on the edges there. So I'm gonna cut it like right here. It's just to prevent it from messing up your glass. And then I'm gonna take some alcohol and a rag, if I can find my rag. Ah, oh, it's right here. And I'm just gonna spray some on the rag here and just do this because I don't want any, I want it to stick really good. I don't want any oils on there. Now that that's done, you just peel it back. So it's gonna be like this on here. I'm just gonna peel it back. There's like a double-sided tape on here. So you just take it all off. I'm gonna take this Put it like that, just line it up to the best of my ability. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right there, just about. I want it to be kind of towards the top there. Oops, I let go a little bit. All right, so then I have this here like that. You push it on and it's just the right thickness where it's not creating any extra, but it's making it nice and snug. So I'm going to plug this in, only goes in one way, make sure that's on there, it's nice and snug against the glass, it's not going to break it, it has that nice padding there, 
and the front looks really good. So I'll just get the rest of the cabinet going, but we are gonna test it out. And then if we need to take it out or reverse anything or change the buttons around, so I'm not sure these are correct, we can do that. So let me go ahead and turn this on. I will be right back. But definitely not getting snagged. I used to get snagged with my fingers here on the control panel artwork. Yeah, it works. I can't wait to tell um, my buddy, actually, he has a Marble Madness and he bought the same um, bearings from Arcade Shop. And I'm gonna tell him to do what I did with the breaking it in. Oh man, it's, it's like night and day. Like, look at that. I can just, wow, that is crazy. Nice. So let's get a free guy here if I can. It's been a while. Now this is where you can get some bonus points. Nice. But it's so precise now. Like I used to be able to whip it underneath them and get stuff and, and it wouldn't do it. Now it's like, it just reacts so well. So this is player one again. I'm gonna kill myself on purpose here. I was just really testing the button to make sure. It's really cool how it lights up depending who's playing. Like this is still player two. And it's lit up saying it's me, I'm playing. I think that's so cool that comb buttons do that. There we go, there's my free guy. All right, so I have my son closing out the video. He's playing, he's having a great time. It's working really great. I played a few games after this and it works awesome. So we will clean up the rest of the cab. I'll probably save that for a later episode. I just wanted to get this done. This is kind of low hanging fruit for me, but it needed to get done. I had the stuff on there, the overlays. I just never got around to it. So finally, we got it done and it looks great. Um, I'll probably also replace um, those bolts on the control panel. So it looks nicer, but for now it looks pretty amazing. So there you have it guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button if you can. That really does make a difference. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one guys. Uh, I'm on Twitter as well. And of course, Instagram. And of course, follow the links in the description where I have uh, you know, the protection for the glass and uh, also for other stuff that I have down there. I do have affiliate links. I thank you guys for that. And it does go towards the cause on the channel. So. Thanks a lot. Hope you guys like this channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.